This episode's going to be a little bit different. In this episode, I'm going to edit down my three hour live stream from last week into a 10 minute video. In this version, I'm going to discuss the highlights of the process that it took me to go from never tested track sections and wiring to being able to run a train. Welcome to Humanity Junction, where the city intersects with humans. A quick bit of background, and then we'll jump right into it. I have eight T-Track modules. Only one of these modules has ever had trains run on it, but even that one has been completely rewired. Each module is being isolated from the others with insulated rail joiners. There are four wires, two for each track, running back to a block detection device. The block detection device has been wired to Anderson PowerPole connectors for easy connections. None of the wiring has been tested. Doing this live was a bit nerve wracking, but I received some really great suggestions from the chat that helped me move along the setup. The footage from this live stream is sped up approximately 10 times to get it down to the desired length. For additional information, please watch live stream number four or leave a comment. Let's get started. This is the block detection device that everything is going to get wired to. It is a DigiKeys DR4088LNCS. The first thing that I did was sort out all of the jumper wires and put the modules in their general location. The wires are all color coded, so I spread them out so that the same two colors were not next to each other. I connected the jumpers to each module. The next step is leveling and then connecting the modules together. I'm using a torpedo level to check that everything is level. Unfortunately, I was not able to get two of the same exact table, so the table against the wall is two inches shorter than the other table. For future setups, I will raise the wall side table. I just did not have anything stable at the time, so I made all the adjustments with the T-Track modules. Luckily, the modules had enough adjustment to make up for the differences. Six of the modules, the ones painted black and the one with scenery, are all from CMR Products. CMR Products is the sponsor of this video. CMR Products has designed and developed several in-house brands and they manufacture all of their products locally. Please check out their products at the link in the description and use the discount code HUMAN for 7% off of the brand shown in this video. Once leveled, I thought I would start with the module that was at one point working. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know that the wiring on this module is pretty complicated. I used my Bachman New York Central NW2 switcher because it is the DCC locomotive that I own with the most running time. I started by plugging in the track power from the portable control box to the block detection device. Then I plugged in the first module, the one with scenery. When this did not work, I decided to simplify everything. I plugged the control box directly into the other double module that only had track on it. Although I have never used this module before, everything was new, especially the track, so I thought it had the best chances of success. When this still did not work, I decided to try to short out the track with my screwdriver. It was at this point that I realized I was making a very dumb mistake. I forgot to turn on the track power. Once this was sorted out, the layout started to come alive. I cannot begin to tell you how excited I was when the locomotive moved for the first time. 
Once I knew the control box and the module were working, I rewired in the block detection device. But for some reason, I went back to the module with scenery. Eventually, I went back to what I knew worked. I started adding one module at a time, testing the inside and outside track. On the first corner module, the inside track did not work, but the outside track did. Before I started troubleshooting, I connected and tested all the modules. For not having tested anything previously, I was very happy when there were only four modules with issues on one track and the module with scenery that had issues. I used sticky notes to keep track of which modules had issues. There were more inside track issues than outside track issues, so I started with the corner module with the one outside track issue. I got out my multimeter so that I can use the continuity tester. I find a continuity tester a very valuable tool to have when troubleshooting issues. For testing, I determined that there was not continuity from one end of the jumper cable. I eventually worked my way down to a broken solder joint at the Unitrack joiner. This solder joint is something that other members of the T-Track community identified as a weak point. This is another reason for the lever nuts, as they act as a strain relief on the wires. I originally got out my drill, thinking I would try to make the hole bigger and just solder it from the bottom. But ultimately, I decided to remove the track from the module. Of course, I had already glued the track down prior to testing. In addition to this being the first time setting up these modules, this is also the first time I've ever used this soldering iron. This was one time where the live chat really helped me out. I did not know that the metal joiner could easily be removed from the plastic holder. This made it a lot easier to solder and not melt the plastic. I want to take a brief break from the action and thank all of my supporters on Patreon. If you would like to find more information about supporting this channel, the links are in the description below. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. I still do not have a helping hands to use while soldering, so I used heat sink clamps to hold the parts and then used a spring clamp to attach them to a 123 machinist block. I needed to get out the optivizer to see what I was doing. It took a while to get everything lined up, but after that, the fix went quickly. It's a lot easier to solder when nobody is watching. Putting everything back together went a lot faster than taking it all apart. I did not glue down the track this time until I tested everything. And luckily for me, the fix worked on the first try. I think I was just as surprised as everybody else. Next, I moved on to the single spacer module. This is where I made another mistake. My initial tests with the continuity tester had similar results as the corner module. So I jumped to the conclusion that I needed to re-solder another rail joiner. Therefore, I moved ahead with removing the track from the module instead of doing further testing. This part is really hard to watch. This one was glued down a lot better than the corner module. At this point, I realized that the issue was not a broken wire. It turned out that I'd pushed the wires too far into the lever nut so they were contacting the insulation and not the copper. I rushed the testing and ended up making additional work for myself. Luckily, I learned my lesson, and on the next two modules, I tried the simple fix first. Using the continuity tester, it was very easy to identify and fix these issues. I kept testing the train between each fix because I was getting more and more excited that I was getting closer and closer to making a full loop. I left the module with scenery for last because I thought it would be the hardest to fix. But when I tested the connector on the module for continuity, everything worked. Then looking at the jumper cable, I did notice that one of the metal contacts was not seated all of the way. 
It was not easy, but I did eventually get it completely seated. After reconnecting everything, it still did not work, but I saw some signs of life. I thought that after I did the final scene rework on this module that I'd clean the track and run trains, but it's looking like this was not the case. I ended up using CRC-226 for an initial cleaning and tried to get away with just that in the track cleaning car, but it became quickly apparent that I needed something more abrasive. I got out my yellow perfect cleaner first, as it is the least abrasive of the track cleaning blocks that I have. I just kept running the train with the cleaning car and when I found a spot that needed a little extra help I added in some elbow grease. It did take a bit, but I eventually got it running smoothly on the inside track. Then I moved on to the outside track and also got that working. From start to finish, it was about three hours, including the time I was interacting with the online chat. There were a lot of firsts in this video. First time testing the wiring, first time with the modules, first time soldering, and luckily by the end, the first time running trains on a live stream. Please let me know if you enjoyed this edit of my previous live stream. I thought that seeing the process would be interesting and I wanted to make it available to as many people as possible. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe and select the bell icon to receive notifications. Thanks again and have a great day.